everyone. Uh, welcome to another video. Today we are going to be doing the first part in a new tutorial series on making a kernel Python sheet with C++ and Python. So here we are. Python kernel driver communication. Alright, so the goal of the series is to make a kernel sheet for CSGO and SolQ developed with Python and C++. You might be wondering how am I going to do Python and C++. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but here's going to be the layout of the actual tutorial series. So today's introduction, just like developing the actual driver, like understanding how drivers work, what a kernel driver is, that sort of thing. And then the part two is going to be user mode wrapper. So basically the driver communicating with the C++ uh, user mode, and that communicates with uh, Python. Um, and that'll be in part three. And then part four is going to be actually doing it with CSGO. All right, uh, so what is a function hook driver? So basically there's different ways we can communicate with our driver in our user mode. And when I say driver in user mode, I mean like a dot sys and a dot exe. Um, so basically uh, dot sys, that's a driver, that's like ring zero right here, right, kernel. That has the most access, the most uh, privilege to your computer, to your system. Um, and ring three is where we are, where like uh, our Python stuff is. So like our Python glow, the, all that stuff is in here in ring three. Um, but basically what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna have our ring three Python. That's gonna communicate uh, with another uh, application and that's communicating with kernel and that's what's actually writing memory. Whereas in the past, we all of the writing memory, everything just happened in applications and that could be easily blocked by anti-cheats, that sort of stuff. Um, so basically our function hook driver, the way we're gonna communicate um, is by hooking a function in a dxg kernel that's this all right that function is going to be nt open composition surface section info long term it's fine you don't need to memorize it just so you guys know this driver was based off of nulls driver so if you want to go more in depth into c++ drivers i recommend uh, checking that video out so communication methods there's a few different ways we could do this we could do it with like networking and ports so we could have like uh, our kernel driver be like a server and like listen to sockets and stuff it's like a socket driver so like literally like sending packets of information and that's how it like processes writing memory we could have like an io driver uh that sort of stuff um so yeah let's get into it all right so the first thing we're going to need is the windows driver development kit um so like just with normal visual studio you can't uh actually make a kernel driver you need to install a few things first so basically uh i have three three tabs here I'm going to leave all the links to these in the description, um, but I'm just going to go through here. So first, we need um, to install some stuff on the Visual Studio, this stuff right here. So if we go and we look up Visual Studio Installer right here, Visual Studio Installer, all right? I've already installed all this stuff, but I'm just going to show you how you would install it, just so you guys know what I'm talking about. So we go to Modify here, all right? Wait for that to uh, do its thing there. All right, you can see I already have an installer right here. Basically, what you would do, you go to individual uh, components, and you'd go to search components, and then for each one of these, so we would go uh, C++ ARM build tools, look that up, build tools, all right, right there, you just check that off, and then you would go through the list, spect uh, Spectre mitigated libs right here, check that off, and then you hit modify, and it would install, it's a few gigabytes, um, and then you'd be good, all right. And then after you have that stuff installed, then you want to install the um, WDK. I'm pretty sure you should already have this uh, Windows uh, SDK installed just with Visual Studio. Um, by the way, it says Windows 11, it's fine. I'm on Windows 10, it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, and then what we're gonna do is install this uh, Windows Development Kit. Uh, so we go here, click this. All right, and you're gonna run that, set that up. Um, I already have it set up, but it's just Windows Driver Kit, blah, 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 blah. All right, sweet. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna do that again. And there we go. So the next thing we're gonna need is um, here, debug view. And this is gonna be like printing to the console. So in normal C++, we can just do SGDC out. We can print stuff to the console. It's a kernel driver, so we can't just do it that simply. So we actually need like its own software to view messages and stuff. So this is where we're gonna be using debug view. So basically, uh, I'm going to leave this link. All right, you're going to hit download. It's a zip. You're going to extract that, open it. I'll just show and folder real quick here. Uh, if we just extract that, boom. All right, you have all these files. And uh, 
we're good to go. So we're going to be using the 64-bit version because we're going to be making a 64-bit driver. All right, so once you have that downloaded, we're also going to need to do uh, download KD Mapper. Now this is by uh, The Cruise. You might know him from his contributions to Apex Legends, that sort of stuff. Um, uh, KD Mapper was originally made by another dude, uh, Z175, um, and uh, The Cruise just kind of kept it up. Um, so basically we're going to be using this to actually map our driver. Um, so since we do have an unsigned driver, we need to be able to actually, you know, put it somewhere, you know, get it working. So um, we're going to be using KD Mapper to actually map it into memory. All right. So uh, we're going to download this. All right. We'll, we'll extract it, yeah. All right, extract all. All right, there we go. Boom. And now we're just going to close this. We'll get back to it in a little bit, all right? So now we're going to actually work on making our driver. All right, so we're in Visual Studio. We're going to create a new project. We're going to search up here for uh, kernel. And as you can see, it's already here for me. It might be there for you. I don't know. If you don't see this, you did not follow the steps on the WDK properly, uh, the Windows driver stuff, all right? Make sure you do all this stuff. This is really important. Otherwise, you literally won't be able to uh, make drivers, all right? Very important stuff there. All right, we're going to go with a uh, empty right here. Um, hit next. All right, project name. Uh, we'll just call this um, uh, CPP driver. All right, so we just have this um, empty project here. You can see I have my three folders here. I got my actual driver, KD Mapper, Debug View. We're good to go. All right, so we're just gonna pop this open here. Source files. We're gonna add a new item. We're gonna call this driver uh, CPP. All right, and first we need to make sure we switch this to x64 release right there. All right. And once we have this, we actually need to include a few things so we can get going with this. All right, so we're going to include uh, mtdef.h, mtdef.h. We're going to include mtifs.h. All right, we're going to include mtddk.h. We're going to include windef. H. And we're going to include ntstr safe. Dot h. There we go. All right. And now we're actually going to go into our driver entry. So basically, the driver starts at a certain point. Um, it's not like we can just do int main and we can put all our stuff in there. We actually need to call a driver entry point. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go here. We're going to go to properties should be in linker all right um let's see advanced there we go entry point so the name of our entry point we're just going to call it i don't know entry point all right entry point hit okay and now we can actually do nt status entry point and it'll be called um, and since this is technically C code, we need to mark it as X turn C. All right, so X turn C, there we go. Entry point, there we are. And now we need to put a few things in here. We're gonna do P driver object, P driver object, driver OBJ, whatever you wanna call it. And then P unicode string, PC Unicode string, just P Unicode string. Alright. Registry path. And that's just the path to our driver. Alright. And once we have this, we should be good to go here. We're going to do unreferenced parameters, driver object. And this is because we actually don't define any of these um, in our project here. So we just need to mark it as such. Alright. And now we're just going to do uh, debug print x. And I was saying earlier that we can't actually just do std or c out or whatever. It's not that simple. We need to use debug view. So basically, this function right here will let us print to there. So we'll be able to view it in debug view. All right. So you'll see what I mean in a bit here. 
debug. We're going to do uh, debug print ex. All right, zero zero. And then we're just going to say tutorial driver loaded. There we go. And then we're just going to return status success. And this is our basic hello world driver. Also, we just want to put a dash, uh, sorry, slash in there for uh, new line. All right, so we're just going to go here, build this. Um, I might have had to uh, run this as administrator. Uh, okay, nope. But generally, when we're working on drivers, everything we do, we would need to run as administrator because some stuff doesn't have privilege. Because if we go back to that uh, diagram there, we had circle. Uh, some user mode stuff does not have access to uh, drivers and whatnot. So make sure we run it as admin, and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, so once we have this uh, actually built here, uh, we can go to the path. See this here. Boom. Open file location. And you can see we have cpp driver dot sys. So there we go. We have our driver actually uh, built. Um, so now we're actually going to find a way to map it. All right. So like I said earlier, we're using KD Mapper. So we're going to go to KD Mapper. And we're actually going to build it ourselves. So open KD Mapper here. All right. So I just got KD Mapper here. Um, the main dot cpp put in release mode and it should just be a simple build i mean it's not hard to compile here so there we go we can see it succeeded um and now if we just go to that path should have, yep kd mapper master here um x64 release kd mapper .exe. so there we go now we can actually uh map our driver Go to CPP driver, x64 release. You can see we have our sys here. All right, and then we're gonna open debug view. Now, if we go to debug view 64, run it as administrator. We open that up here. We can see there's some messages. I uh, have some Razor sign up scrap installed. I probably should uninstall it, but whatever I have it installed, so we can see it's actually printing stuff. Um, because it's a driver. So anyway, we go to KD Mapper. I'm just going to copy it into the release path here, uh, just so it's easier, so I don't have to open this folder every time. All right, and then we just want to go to uh, Options, sorry, Capture, Capture Kernel. That way we can actually um, see messages from our kernel drivers, not just user mode stuff. All right, and then we're just going to go to CPP Driver All right, drag that onto KD Mapper it should be uh, running as administrator. And there you go, we can see tutorial driver loaded. And uh, that means that our driver is actually running in the background right now. So now we have our hello world driver uh, working. Um, to unload the driver, all we have to do is restart the computer. So that's what we're gonna do real quick. I'm gonna restart and then we'll uh, get to finishing up our driver so we can use it in the next tutorial. All right, I'm back from restarting. I just opened up the driver project again. Um, and now our driver is not running and we can continue working all right so now what we're going to do is we're just going to go to header files add a new item we're going to call it driver.h right. driver.h and in here uh, we're just going to basically copy and paste a bunch of crap because it's just a bunch of just uh, structs and stuff that you don't really need to like know what it is I'll explain um, what other stuff is um, but basically, we're just going to go to driver.cpp. All right, we're going to take these includes here, plop those in there, and actually in uh, driver.cpp, we're going to include driver.h. All right, once we have this, I'm going to uh, like put this in the description or I don't know, put something. But this, uh, all these structs that I'm about to copy and paste, um, there's a few that I'm going to go over. But they actually are, but anyway, let's get these here. So. Copy memory, this is pretty important. So this is how we're actually going to destruct is going to be how we're uh, actually communicating with uh, CPP driver and user mode because they're both going to have this struct. Um, so we have things like read and write. So basically if it's, you know, if read is true, then we're reading memory. If write is true, then we're, we're writing memory. Uh, module name, you know, what module we're writing to, process name, what process we're, module we're writing to, address, what address we're writing to, we're reading to, that sort of thing. Um, 
Um, so yeah, I mean, like the, some of the stuff, like a lot of the stuff, like MM Copy Virtual Memory, you can read up on the stuff if you really want to. Um, it's not since like this is not a driver. I mean, technically this is a driver video, but like th this is on how we can use it with Python. So uh, if you really want to learn about the stuff, go watch Noel's video. He does a really good uh, video on this stuff, and that's where I got get this stuff from. So anyway. Uh, now we're actually going to work on our hook, so we're going to go to new item, hook it at h, and remember when I told you guys we were going to be hooking a function, well that's what we are doing right here, alright, so in hook .h, uh, we're just going to actually make another editor file called memory.h, um, oops, I did not mean to do that, alright, so then we're just going to create a new header file, memory.h, there we are, Alright, hook that h and to read memory.h. Alright. Then memory.h, um, we're just gonna do namespace memory. Alright, in namespace memory we're gonna do p void get system module base module pointer module name. And some of this stuff should be ex uh, self-explanatory if you've done some other reversing stuff. Which, by the way, if you haven't done any reversing stuff before this video, please just just don't like just just go watch some other videos of mine or anyone else's and learn some more. Like just use your mode stuff before you try and do in drivers because it's just it's too complicated. Um, like if you don't understand what module name is, what this means, then you need to just do some more research before you. Uh, do this video and that's fine that doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong it just means you just need to learn a little bit more and then you can come back to it um so anyway so this is to get the module base address if, if you don't know and this is going to be like just like a message whatever you want um i'm just gonna make it like hide driver or something like it's four characters long so like I'm, i'll do like this like for pi driver or something so we're just gonna go here i'm just gonna find uh what is it alphabet two hex all right go here and we're gonna just do uh, pi driver convert that um there we go. Copy that. Alright, do zero x. There we go. Alright, so now we have like our little message thing, whatever. Alright. as it should, all right? Uh, and then we're just gonna do u long get module base x64 pe process prop and then we're gonna return cast that u long 64 ps get process selection Sorry, section base address. Different prop. All right, there we go. What we would do here uh, when we're trying to get ac client.exe's module base address, and then when we're trying to do uh, client.dll's base address, then we use this. All right.
whatever it was up top here. So let me see. All right, my driver. So like P Y D R. I'll put that in there. Um, yeah. All right. So. Okay. If not buffer. Then we're gonna just print something out to make sure that it didn't work and that the process is uh, not running or whatever. So um, failed to allocate, um, could not find process ID. Whatever. All right, there we go. Right, so we're just going to debug print the x to zero. All right, and we'll say um, uh, module name. Sorry, process name, not module. Process name. Uh, let me, where is it? There it is. And then we'll say. PID is there you go. So you can print out um, PID process name. Just you know some nice debug information. All right, and then process info. So we're actually filling uh, this in with our info image name, and then process info unique process ID. There you go. Now we're actually going to read and write memory. So after all this boring stuff, we can get into the juicy stuff. All right, I'm just going to minimize these functions here because they are very annoying to look at. There we go. Now it looks nice and clean. And there's some big rule. Write to read only memory. So right here, this function, all this is doing is just we're taking in our address, our buffer, and basically we're writing to memory that should not be able to be written to. Um, so there we go. Next up, we're going to do uh, reading memory. Down. We're going to writing. 
to virtual memory and we need to be done with our memory header file. All right, so NT status, protect virtual memory. So now we have our protect virtual memory function done, and we are finally finished with memory.h. So now we're going to go on to hook.h, and this is where we're actually hooking um, the function in uh, dxs uh, kernel.sys, uh, sorry, dxg kernel.sys. Alright. So in here is what we're going to be doing if it's CSGO or if it's not CSGO. Um, so I'll explain a little bit of what that is going to be because, uh, I mean, really we shouldn't be hard coding it to see if it's CSGO, but, uh, I mean, honestly, you can do it your own way um, for when you um, are going to implement this. All right, and uh, we're just going to do namespace hook, all right, space hook, and then NT status handler and uh, people would call crap all right and now we're gonna get an error somewhere in here um, and basically all errors are taken or sorry all warnings are taken as an error when you're doing a kernel driver um, but this warning we're gonna get is fine so we're just gonna put pragma warning ignore so it's just just gets rid of it and we don't have to worry about it. Alright, so we're going to just do copy memory pointer. Alright, and then we're going to do n equals copy memory pointer. Sorry, not mm copy. Copy memory. Alright. Call pram. So, now this is part where we're doing the actually interesting stuff. Alright, so if m get pid. So, if the function so we go here to m, copy memory. So, Get PID. So in our function here, like in our user mode, if the function that we call is get process ID, then we're going to give it the process ID. So if it's process ID, then we'll do M PID equals memory get process ID. Alright, and then M process name. So this function we're in here, we're calling that. So it all really relies on this struct here, our copy memory struct. Um, so these bools here. So this is basically these bools are like what function is being called. Um, so if the right right function is being called, then this bool will be true. If the get pid function is called, if base that sort of thing. So we're just going through uh, each one of those right now in our uh, hook handler here. All right. So now we're going to do if m base, and now this is where we're going to be doing like if CSGO is uh, in there, if it's x86, if it's x64. All right, so we're going to do p process process equals null. All right, and then we're going to do if nt status success. wrong nt status underscore success there we go do m pid and process alright then we're gonna do if m pid equals memory 
get process ID. So if it's CSGO um, or any other like 32-bit uh, processes, if the um, process is 32-bit, we need to hard code it, all right? So it's unfortunate, but we do. All right, um, if it's not, if it is process 64-bit, like this whole cube or honestly really most games are 64 bit like you know rainbow six siege or whatever uh call of duty most stuff you're gonna do is 64 bit which is why i hard coded it because most stuff you're gonna do is 64 bit anyway like if you really are doing this only so you can do csgo then you probably won't even want to code the x64 stuff but um if, if, if you're doing 64 bit then it just doesn't really matter um, anyway, so if it's 64 bit, then we're going to use our 64 bit module base address function. Alright, um, and the reason we're doing this is because just the stuff is different. So in here, sorry, I'll, I'll not the stuff, but the function here. So PS process section, like the function we're calling is different here. So that's different from what we're doing in here, which I already explained. But yep. Alright, so if it is. Uh, x86 what are we going to do well we're going to do k apc state APC, we're going to do keys uh, ke stack catch process all right and then we do process and apc again and it's just getting the address on the base memory get module base And then this is going to be our actual module. So if you're doing like engine.dll in CSGO, then you put that. Um, I'm going to do client because most of what we're going to do is client. So like if you want to say that needs the engine, then you're going to have to come back here and rework this, uh, this bit here. Um, so ke okay, unstack catch process and apc. All right. And if the Void. B. There we go. So B is just the module base address. There we go. So now once we have this, we can do our PEV stuff. Um, down here, we're going to do if M PEV. Sorry, else if M. Um, else if um, PB. All right. Then we're gonna do P process. Process equals null. If M. PID equals memory get process ID. So this is once again just to check see if it is Cisco or not because things are different. There right. we go, so that's for x86 processes. Uh, if it's not an x86 process. PS lookup process by process ID. We're going to use MPID and the address of the process. There we go. If this is the four, and then the buffer is going to be equal to um, the get process PID, sorry, PED. Cast as a p void, so ps get p 
process b and process there we go and now we're going to do our read and write so else if m read I'm just going to copy this boom actually no I'm not going to copy that yet um, read kernel memory mpid void and address buffer size. All right, and now we're just gonna copy and paste that there. Change it to be right. Go and then write kernel memory. Um, and mpid and buffer and then this will be an address and we'll pass that as a pboard there we go alright and we're just going to return static success alright and then one last thing here. We're going to make a function, make return a boolean, and this is going to be um, call kernel function. Oh, call kernel function. This is going to be actually hook the address, uh, put in our shell code, that sort of stuff. Um, and what I mean by shell code is basically we're going to have um, we don't want the the driver to just like the function of the driver to completely stop we want it to basically we're hooking our function we're putting in our code and then we want it to resume the code that's going to do anyway so it doesn't like detect anything suspicious and so the things just don't go wrong um, so we're going to do if not kernel function address return false keyboard pointer Hook function and you'll notice that just like generally this whole pro this whole project we're doing a lot of just like making sure like the things are doing right and then we're returning false. Um, obviously you do this normally in code anyway to make sure you're not getting like you know false uh, variables or whatever. But basically we're doing this a lot uh, like no pointer checks that sort of stuff in here because if things go wrong you're gonna blue screen and we want to redu reduce uh, blue screens to just I mean, we don't want to blue screens so we want to make sure we're do everything right. Um, so we're gonna get system module base here. So get system module export. All right, and this is where we're actually going to our um, DXG kernel process. All right, so the actual uh, driver, Windows driver, we are hooking. All right, so in here, we're gonna put in hash or slash slash system root slash slash system thirty two drivers dxg kernel dot sys all right i'm just gonna make sure i spelled that right because if we didn't that wouldn't be too good system 32 drivers dxg kernel dot sys all right sweet and then the name of the function that we are hooking so like i said earlier we were doing nt open composition surface section info and in Noel's video um, he actually leaves a link to um, a github page which has a bunch of uh, functions in this driver uh, which you should go check out because like this function I'm sure is detected by a bunch of anti-cheats so like if you want if this is detected which it might be might not be um, if it is detected you don't have to like scrap this entire driver you just need to change out this function, change out the shell code, which we're about to get into, um, and then you'll be uh, good to go. All right. So after we added that there, we can just do if not function do return false. Then we're gonna get um, our original uh, function shell code. Now this stuff is I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Um, but in Noel's video, which honestly you should just watch that if you really want to learn what you're doing here. Um, 
but basically this is the original function um, in the in the driver uh, so we just want to return to that we don't want to like mess anything up uh, so right here this is the original function of the driver all right and then we have our shell code start and our shell code end all right where it starts this is where our um, function begins and this is where it ends so basically what we're doing is if you don't know what hooks are either you need to learn about that basically we are going we're hooking this function putting in our own code like if it's CSGO we could do it on like a trigger bot or something putting our trigger bot like reading and writing memory uh, command crap uh, and then we're just going back to doing whatever the function that the driver actually needs to do All right. So then we're going to do RTL secure zero memory and original function size of original function. All right, then copy cast that's a key void. And by the way, P void and void pointer, same thing. P means pointer, void. And so there you are. Alright. Now we're gonna do U long pointer. U long pointer. And then original function plus size of shell code start. And test address, which we don't have defined yet. We're going to define that in driver.h. Um, but we're just going to leave that there. We we'll come back to it. All right, and then size of void pointer. All right, we're just going to duplicate that. Um, change this to be size of void pointer here. Size of void pointer. There we go. All right, and then we're just going to change this part to be um, sorry. This should be plus here. Okay, so plus size of void pointer. All right. And then this should be shellcode end. So and shellcode end. And then size of shellcode end. Alright. There we go. Let's make sure nothing we do is wrong there. Take that there. Boom. Perfect. Alright. And then we're just gonna do memory or write to read only memory. Function, original function, size of original function, and we're going to return true. There we go. Now we're done with our hook. So now we can go into driver. Um, sorry, not driver. We want to go into driver.cpp and finish it up there. So now that we got this, we're going to go here. We're just going to Include all of our other stuff. Include memory.c, uh, memory.h, include hook.h. There we go. And then we're going to do if hook call kernel function and hook hook handler. Uh, then we're going to put on there and return. Success. All right. We'll do that. And we'll do else. And then we're just going to say that it was not loaded successfully. Um. Let's say NT open. Or else see what. 
functional is it? All right, there we go. Hooked. All right, and then we'll go here and we'll say uh, function of failed. There we go. And then instead of returning status success, we're going to return status failed driver entry. All right, there we are. We go back to test address and see where that went wrong. All right, test address. Oh, that's why I missed a line. All right. Um, actually, I missed two lines. Yikes. All right. So then copy. And then we do p void u long pointer. Original function shell code start and shell code end size of shell code end shell code start. Oh my god, I'm messing up here. All right, and then we're gonna have a human pointer underscore t test address. Equals reinterpret cast yield pointer for t kernel function address. There we go. Now we don't have any issues and you're good to go. Um, so basically, if we build this now, all right, following wiring is treated as an error. Let's see here. All right, so line 46. Line 46, all right, Let's see what errors, warnings, all right, um, like I said, there's going to be some stuff we're going to have to make, to make the uh, thing ignore, so this is another one here, so, I'm going to disable over there, that should be correct, um, maybe not. Let see, hook that H. I don't think there's anything we have to ignore in here. Oh no, we already did. Driver of H shouldn't be anything in there. Um, okay, so there's a few right here. 147. Okay, so the error we have is conversion from ulong64 to ulong possible loss of data. All right, so what we're going to do is in memory.h, we're going to just disable. Actually, what we'll do is instead of just putting all of them in here, we're going to go into properties and we can just actually write what we want to ignore in here. So that's what we'll do. Um, so I'm pretty sure it is in linker. Have to look around a little bit, see what. Let's see what it is. There we are. All right. Disable specific warnings. So, like I said, they're not errors, they're warnings. So there's certain ones we want to just ignore. And so we're gonna add a few of them. So we're gonna do uh, 4616, we're gonna do 4715. Um, actually, there's only two here. Um, I'm writing down the ones that I had issues with when I was writing this, um, but we're just gonna, we can just write down these ones here. So 4244. As you can see here, we have C four two two four C four two four four, and then we have uh, four three five three. I guess if that's causing us any issues there. Hit OK, build that, and we should. All right, so we have four seven one five. Yeah, so we have a few. So we'll do four six one six four seven one five. Four two six seven. I already have that one. All right. Um, all right. Six zero eleven. Six two seven three. Four one three. And six three eight seven. All right. There we are. Save that. 
go back and now it should work successfully there we are so as you can see if the function here is hooked successfully then uh it'll say it's, like it's hooked so we're gonna have a debug and uh see if it works all right so debug view run that capture capture kernel close that out uh we're going to just go to our file here open that file there we go map it all right there we go we can see tutorial driver loaded and then we have nt open composition surface section info function hooked that's a mouthful but there we are so now we're ready for the next tutorial this is a long one but it's finally over um so we can get ready to do the actual interesting stuff this was the big bulky video um glad you guys sticked around for it um the new tutorial will come out soon thanks